Hello once again witchy people. Welcome back to the Covenstead which is currently the same one as I had last month. <laughs> okay so I had literally five minutes and I thought I'd get on and sort of update you, let you know what's going on. So we have sold the house twice. Um, uh, the current buyers are lovely lovely people and I, I hope they'll be happy here. I've got to say the last two, three months has been a joy living here. I've really, really loved it. It's been peaceful and quiet and lovely. <laughs> I think the neighbours are trying to tell me something. It's like, let's get rid of her and then we'll be really good. <laughs> anyway, it's not that bad. So I've missed out on quite a lot of... Um, sort of like esbats and sabbats because most of my the stuff that I want for my working practice is not here it's at the new house bungalow and it got me around to thinking about just how much do I need stuff to celebrate and I don't not to say that I'm going to get rid of anything I'm not <laughs> Um, it's just that I have been celebrating very differently. So um, I, I haven't got a, a Samhain altar up at the moment or a Samhain shelf as it, <laughs> as it usually is. Um, I have, oh, I've been a bit naughty. I bought a few things. I bought some um, little pumpkins or what are they called? Needle felt pumpkins, which are going to go on a little display with a knitted bumblebee um yeah but it's been very um different it's, i can only just say it's been very different and sort of trying to celebrate certain times and note certain times in the calendar it's kind of taken me outside rather than inside and what have i got you know because i've got nothing here <laughs> and it's kind of taken me back a little bit onto relying on myself because i can't set up a space here because technically it's not my home anymore and it's a house that i'm keeping tidy and neat for someone else <laughs> and that the garden is is all I've got and I have to try and keep that tidy um which I I'm, I'm trying to do sort of I mean I've got the amount of rose hops or rose haws I don't know how people prefer to call them uh but the rose hops the little red little leftover bits of when the roses were blooming I have literally hundreds of them on my wild rose and I was kind of like being taking some of those. I'm going to take some of those in. I think I'm going to make a garland out of them. I'm going to dry them out and just string them all together. I'm going to string them all together to dry them out. Um, if you dry them out first, they're really tough to try and get a needle through. So I'm going to do that. And mm, I don't know what else. I've, that's my main thing that I've got in my mind. And the other thing I've been doing a lot of more recently or trying to is self-care so i'm trying to get to be more me and accepting of me and i think that's what it is self-acceptance so i have stopped dyeing my hair you can see my gray <laughs> i may dye it again i don't know i don't don't know if i can get used to this sort of like i i have like two gray streaks that come down my hair and i mean the rest of it's not too bad See, no grey back here, just here. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I might yeah, grey. I might dye my hair again. Um, I've stopped wearing false nails. I feel like this is the weirdest thing for me to to not wear false nails and to just have my nails is <laughs> they're not doing too badly though. They're just not as long as I'm used to. I'm used to obviously having very long nails. Um, but. <laughs> You know, it is. It's, it's trying to be self-accepting. 
So obviously since I had COVID, um, I became very, very ill. And that made me put on a lot of weight because I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even walk anywhere. And my automatic comfort sort of thing is, I can't do this, let me eat something instead. And it's usually things like toast and cake and very comforting things. Um, and I've kind of got round to the thought that yes, I will have to lose weight again for my, my health. But apart from that, I don't mind. I don't mind me. If other people have got a problem with it, then that's their problem. They don't have to visit that problem onto me. And I've been so, over the years, been so out of being a heathen, a pagan, a witch, a hedge witch, and sort of letting people know, you know, it's, it's not bothered me that people know. And yet, you know, desperately trying to control what weight I am and not accepting that. So it's like, oh, look at me, accept me, I'm a witch, but worried about how, the, how other people perceive me as this larger lady. And I definitely think that's something that we all have to work on, not weight-wise, but allowing us just to be who we are. I mean, I'm never going to stop wearing makeup. That is not going to happen. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I'll never stop, you know, curling my hair occasionally. But I'm going to stop worrying so much. I mean, I don't get up and put makeup on first thing in the morning anymore. Maybe it's an age thing. If I happen to answer the door to the postman or postwoman, post person, as they're delivering my mail, does it matter if I've not got makeup on? I can lounge around in my dressing gown all day and it doesn't matter, as long as I'm doing it for the right reasons. You know, I'm doing it because I just want a day of nothing, just looking after me and, you know, concentrating on me. So that's okay. But yeah, this whole moving malarkey has certainly very much shown me that I don't need things. I just like things. <laughs> so I'm not going to give up on things. Um, but I am, I am going to start thinking about... I've always thought of myself as being sort of like this person who very much is in tune with nature and goes out to nature and accepts nature into their practice. And I kind of realised that maybe I'm not as naturistic, I hope that's the right word, <laughs> as I thought. Because now, as I say, I'm having to rely on it so much more. I have to rely on what I have around me just as I am. I can't, I can't have, right, all my candles are not here, so I can't light a candle. And it's, it's things as simple as that, things. I have not got things. Most of my incense is not here. So I have to go out and like pick some mint and some basil and, you know, maybe a few little flowers, a, a bit of Veronica, a bit of Speedwell, you know, a bit of chamomile and, and make my own scent within the house. Which is actually turning out quite nice. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to make my own sort of sewing it's not exactly an altar. I, I, I usually have shelf space, but I do have a space for each Sabbath or Esbat, depending on the season. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to pick those rose holes and I'm going to thread them. And I'm, I'm quite looking forward to it. This is something that I normally wouldn't have done. I would have maybe grabbed a handful or had a sprig or something, but I wouldn't have done that. Um, I may, before I leave here, take some holly and dry it out or oh, I don't know there's so much in this garden that I'm going to miss however in the new garden um, I'm going there on Sunday today is Thursday so I'm going there on Sunday to pick 
uh, hazelnuts because I have hazelnuts in the garden. So I have apples, I have hazelnuts. Um, oh crikey, what else is there? There's, oh, we were there the other day and we had bats. Oh, it was amazing. Bats like this close to us, they were flying around us and over the tops of our heads, like this far away. And it was lovely. My husband loved it. He was like, I've never had seen this before. I'm like, you've been missing out. <laughs> So yes, and I think it's it served definitely as you know a bit of a lesson for me that maybe I need to really get back to my roots more and think about not how I practice but why I practice in the way I do. So you know, it, it's having that reverence for that time of year by using what nature's going to give me, by using my instincts and my own thoughts, processes, rather than just take it as read that I should be celebrating this or I should be doing that. And instead of thinking more myself, and I think that can only be a good thing. So although I'm finding it very stressful <laughs> at the moment, it can only be a good thing. So, and I just wanted to sort of like let you all know what was going on? Oh, and, 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 I'm getting another dog. <laughs> so we've still got Barkley. Hello, baby. Do you want to come and say hello? Come and say hello then. Come on then. See, we've still got the Barkley. See, say hello, Barkley. Say hello. <laughs> okay, so he's a little bit of an old man now, but he's sure. You're my favourite boy, aren't you? Yeah, you are. And we're getting a Cocker Spaniel. Um, she's Barclay's colour, this sort of colour. And Oh, you're right, baby. <laughs> and um, so this is Barclay McScruffles and she will be called Lady Woofington. Much to my daughter's sadness, who wants to call her Lady Chun Chun Chunkington. Yeah, because she's a bit of a chunker. <laughs> anyway, so yes, that's my other news. We're getting a, a little puppy. So Barkley's going to have a little sister and he's going to be a big brother and he's going to be so wonderful. Yes, he is. Oh! <laughs> he's not impressed by anything, is he? Hello. <laughs> so, yes. Um, there we go. And, and, of course, when we move, we only take two cats with us because one cat uh, started off as my cat but she decided who her owner was and her her owner is definitely my daughter and of course my daughter is moving home as well and she will be completed and moving within two to four weeks which is our time frame then when my daughter moves out then we move out completely um and then we have to spend a few months in the house basically getting all this stuff together so that, you know, like obviously I've got to have a garden office for all my stuff um, because I'm losing a room. I've got no storage in the new place. It's, I think, I, I'm at the stage now where I kind of wish that I bought my mother-in-law here to live. <laughs> But that kind of defeats the object of going back to the bungalow because that's where she's lived since 1957. I think it's 1957 when the bungalow was built. She's been there since then, except for the time of the last year, year and a couple of weeks that she spent um, in the nursing home. And we want to get her back to somewhere that she remembers. So... Yeah, that's why the big change, but I kind of wish, you know, I kind of wish we could stay here and have her here. I think that would be, it would be nice, but, um, you know, got to do what's best for other people sometimes. And hopefully, in by doing what's best for someone else, you find that you can also do something better for you, you know? I'm hoping that, that, that that kind of whole karmic thing is going to come back on me and say, oh, yeah, you know, you did good, so let's give you some, <laughs> let's give you some good. Maybe, we'll see, you know. We, we tried the home for a year and it's a wonderful home. 
it's just that Mary is, um, she's not a mixer. She, she doesn't like mixing with other people. <laughs> she's not a people person. <laughs> You know, so yeah, hopefully, you know, we're, we'll get back to the bungalow and it'll be almost like she never left. Except it'll be my house now. My house rules, which she will not follow at all. <laughs> anyway, that's it. I'm going to stop gabbing on now. So that's it. We have sold the house. Hopefully within a month we should be all gone. Um, And... You know, my practice is changing because of this, but only in a way that could be better. But also I think because, although I think my mother-in-law would be very open to how I live my life, I don't want to leave things lying around that she's going to pick up and put in her mouth thinking that it's fine. Because she can be a bit like that. And if she doesn't put it in her mouth, she'll put it in a dog's mouth, you know. And Barclay will eat anything that's given to him. So I am going to take my practice away from the home and maybe into the office in the garden. Which once again will probably only be a good thing. You know, we'll, we'll see how it works out. So that's it. That's my news. That's my five minutes turned into 15. <laughs> and I will be back soon. And think about how you practice. If I've got a change, then, you, you know, you take on some changes as well. There you go. <laughs> and other than that, I think Samhain is sort of this October sort of time, sort of like October definitely going into November and then through to December. It's definitely a time to embrace changes and start to do things differently. It's a time when, obviously we have to sort of like, if we live with the seasons, you do do things differently. You know, I mean, and I mean, my daughter is knitting I know that sounds really silly. She started up knitting and she's knitted herself some really gorgeous jumpers. Beautiful, beautiful jumpers. And I think that's a, a, a change in the season. She's getting it all ready for the season. I'm still going on, aren't I? Anyway, yeah, so take it on board. Take it that this is a time for embracing change, even if it's only temporary change. And that's all I'm going to leave you with there. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And uh, I hope to see you in the new Covenstead very soon. Bye for now, witchy people.